Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and immediately his feet and ankle bones regained strength. And he rising up, walking, leaping and praising God. Healing means fixing it. Healing means fixing it. So we've got the option, Brother Billy, to lift up these weak arms and these, get these knees established through the strength that comes from him. I'm talking about spiritually now. You understand that. I'm talking about spiritually. Getting ourselves raised up and realize, number one, life ain't that bad. Number two, my strength is not in me anyway. It's in the Lord. But rather that you be healed. The problem with healing, I remember Brother David taught about this. I've heard others. The problem being healed is when Bartimaeus rose up, to go meet Jesus. The Bible says he cast off his garment. The blind man, Brother Mark, that was healed when the disciples said, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind. The Lord said, there's nobody sin. But the glory of God might be manifest in the earth, that the light might be shown. You know what happened the day after? God have mercy. I'm meddling right now, I know, but I'm not scared. You know what happened the next day, Brother Marcus? You know Barnabas' normal job was? Somebody get me to the Jericho Road. But you know what he had to do on the next day? He had to get up and pack a lunch. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now so strong. And the scary thing is, if there's going to be some people receive it, and then there's going to be some people saved. Na 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 na. Or like my little cousin used to do. It's a small world after all. <laughs> when she didn't want to hear, she was getting in trouble. She didn't want to hear the right way. You drowned it out. Drowned it out. Because when you get healed, you can't sit at the gate no more. Well, Brother Rice, I'm in the Holy Ghost this morning as strong as I've been in months. It's like I heard a testimony the other day, Brother Rice, of a man been blind all his life. If I'm not mistaken, Sister Eloise, it was your daddy that prayed for him. The man was blind. I may have my story mixed up, but I think I'm right. They prayed for him, and God healed him. He could see. I think it was in that church over in the old church right over there on the corner. They had light bulbs hanging. And that man turned around, and he counted off how many light bulbs there were. And before he was blind, he said, there's them light fixtures. And Brother Purser asked him, he said, did God heal you, brother? And he said, I think he did. And bam, he went stone blind again. Never to see again. Why is there fear in allowing God to heal you? Do you notice that in the scripture? That Brother Billy to say, but let it rather be healed, puts the onus on us? God have mercy. One of the main reasons why that we don't want people coming to apologize to us and ask for forgiveness is because we don't want to forgive them. Sometimes, Brother Billy, I like to be mad. I've been hurt, I've been jacked up, 
I've been messed with. I had my feelings trampled on. I don't want to say I forgive you. So I'm just going to stay mad. And directly, I'm going to find myself lost and on the road to a devil's hell. Because I refuse to let it be Verse 14, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Brother Rice, now it's getting down to where the rubber meets the road. Follow, pursue peace with all men, work on it, strive for it, try to get it. Let me tell you something. You can pray hours a day for your kids and your loved ones. You can fast meal after meal after meal. But they can walk up on you talking bad about somebody and running somebody down and you just canceled out every prayer you prayed. Because you see, Sister Maria, the way this works is I don't just say, all right, Lord, now it's up to you, and then go on about my rat killing. But I got to work with him. Follow peace with all men. If you're constantly in, 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 in uh, conflict with people, and if you're constantly disagreeable and, and contrary and just downright ornery, you destroyed your witness. And we preach holiness, we believe in holiness, and I'm teaching it on Wednesday night. But the Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. That peace with all men is included in not seeing the Lord. Oh, God have mercy. We're just looking for practical things. So you mean to tell me that I can go make peace with all of my enemies and I go a better chance of going to heaven? Yes, I'm saying it. Let it be healed. Pursue holiness. Follow the correcting hand of God. Remember, he only chastens those who are in need of it. You know, the ideal thing is, is if you tell that little three-year-old, and I dreamed last night about a little baby running out in front of a car, so y'all better be teaching this stuff. And it woke me up, scared me to death. But you teach that little pecker wood not to run out in the street, and he does. When you tear his backside up, the plan is he don't run in the street no more. And when the Lord chastens you and corrects you and directs you, the plan is stop doing it. <laughs> it's just that simple. He only does it for us to reach a desired place, which is to make us holy. Which includes not only a right relationship with God, but a right relationship with mankind. Without which no man shall see the Lord. Let me tell you something. Good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. When the Bible starts talking about if you don't do this, you won't see the Lord, Brother Rice, I got to make some changes because I want to see him. There ain't nothing. There's no vindication. There's no grudge. There's no getting right. There's no getting even. There ain't nobody giving me my money back that they stiffed me over that's worth going to hell over. If you ain't never been done wrong and never got it right, you know something, Brother David, and I've talked about this. Joseph was lied on by Potiphar's wife, said he tried to rape me, and she grabbed his thing off to prove it, grabbed his, his uh, 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 mantle to prove it. And you know what? He was never vindicated. You don't find anywhere where Mrs. Potiphar ever came forward and said, I got to let y'all know I lied on that boy. Never. Because Brother Rice, he recognized that it was prison that made him into what God needed him to be. And his pursuit was not one to vindication, but his pursuit was one of fulfillment. Verse 15, looking diligently, 
lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. I hope to goodness that for the last time, for the last time after this service today, did I say for the last time that anybody ever comes to me and said they heard gossip in the church house? That they heard somebody be talked bad about in the church house? God forbid that three or four of us would ever get together and go to whispering about somebody in the church house. You keep on doing that, you're going to hell. Say, oh, who do you think you are? I'm not. The Bible says it. <laughs> say, well, I don't know if you ought to be preaching like that. I ain't. The word is. And the Bible does say, let judgment begin at the house of God. We're just people. We're just humans and we mess up. But the important thing is, Sister Maria, is we get corrected and get back on the right track. That's what I want. I want to be corrected. You know something, Brother Pete, when I was coming up, I never would admit it. Because it was fun being bad. But Mama, every now and again, she would say something like, I ain't going to pray for you no more. But that ain't the right answer. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Being bad was fun for a little bit. Let me tell you what was more fun is going home and laying my head down in a bed that I knew was a safe place. Getting my way wasn't nearly so much comforting as being able to go and lay my head down. And Brother Jackie know that if the booger man came, I had somebody watching out for me. Because just as fast as he would tear my backside up, you let somebody get crossways with one of his boys. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God we serve. Huh? Do you want to be right? Do you want to be right? Here's a silly, stupid, silly, ignorant, crazy thing is I can preach this stuff and, and Brother Manning, I feel so much anointing. I feel so much of the Holy Ghost. It's like I could explode. And I can look around and see the ones that got mad instead of convicted. I want to be convicted. Because here's why. You keep on going the way you're going, you're going to fall short of the grace of God. Because it's going to happen if you persist on staying on the crooked path. Come on, don't think I'm, that I'm just preaching to the choir or that I'm just preaching. You know, I, I've had to this week, Brother Pete, I've had to this week ask God, last week, wasn't this week, last week, ask God to forgive me, Brother Billy, for saying something I had no business saying about somebody. Just in a conversation. I said, Lord, please forgive me. And what's more, Brother Rice, start stopping me before I say it. You know why, Sister Maria? I want to be holy. You know what? I don't know I could live with myself if I said just something innocent, little stupid thing. And somebody goes out into eternity over it. Because here's what happens. You fall short of the grace of God. And a root of bitterness springs up inside of you. And thereby many be defiled. Get this. Because when you get off track, when you, when you turn around, when you go back and, and, and that infirmity gets the best of you, that weakness gets the best of you, then everything that happens in your life will be somebody else's fault which will ultimately reach the place of us blaming God. And a root of bitterness will spring up in us. And a bitter root becomes a bitter tree, which puts off bitter fruit, which is then shared by others and cause them to partake of our bitterness. And they become corrupted and defiled. So if you insist on staying on, on this, this crooked path, if you insist on staying on this wrong direction rather than listening to the Lord and be directed by the Lord, not only are you going to destroy your life, but you're going to destroy everybody around you.
Tell them the preacher's going a little long. We'll still be there. We still get to eat dinner on Sundays, even though the preacher might be long-winded. You just get to beat the, the Baptist already eat and gone. Or whatever church they go to. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person. We automatically think of a sexual thing when we read fornication. But this fornicator it's referring to here refers to infidelity in relationship with God. Going off and serving something else. And hope you can see that the vein of this preaching is who we're going off and serve is us. Serving us rather than God. And profane person refers to someone. This is actual definition for the word profane. Is one that lacks spiritual values. Just, just a little by word. Just, I mean, just a, not a by word. Goodness gracious sakes alive. Just a little, little, little bypass right here. Somebody that talks filthy all the time, swears and curses all the time. They're a profane individual and that is evidence that they don't have godly values. As Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Esau sold his birthright as the rights he was born with as the firstborn son. The double portion of the father, the right to carry on the family name, the right to, to live at the home place. He sold it for one meal. You can read it, Genesis chapter 25, I believe. Excuse me, I believe it is. He was hot. Tired, hungry. One might say that he was overwhelmed by his present circumstances. And his present circumstances through overwhelming him and frazzling him and, and getting him upset caused his appreciation for his birthright to diminish to the point that he was willing to trade it for a meal. Now, Brother David, what's the crazy thing about swapping something so important for a meal? What's going to happen in the morning? You're going to be hungry again. For a momentary respite from a temporary feeling of hunger, he traded his birthright. And you know what? For a short time, for a short time, Sister Maria, it was worth it. Ooh, boy, Jacob, he can cook some pottage. For a short time, he wasn't hungry anymore. But you know how long his birthright was gone for? It was gone forever. What eternal decisions are you willing to make to fulfill a temporary feeling? He sought a place of repentance. He was sorry. He was heartbroken. He hated Jacob. He wanted to kill him. It was Jacob's fault. Now, it wasn't Jacob's fault. The Bible says he despised his birthright. You know something, Brother Rice? There was no place for him to return. The blessing was gone. Can I tell you not to disregard the warnings of Scripture? We believe in grace. We believe in mercy. I'm not telling you that Esau went to a place where God wouldn't forgive him. But he went to a place where he could not get back to where he should have been. Jesus, God Almighty did say, in Genesis chapter number 6, I will not always strive with man. If we persist in doing it by ourselves, we will certainly fail. The only hope of success is to recognize that God is for me. Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not be weary. Man, you can see it, Brother Billy, you can see it. New people come in. They go off like a house of fire. But then when life keeps lambasting, you just see that, that smile kind of go even. And then it kind of go down. And, but Brother Pete, God is for me. You know what? He's for me as much when I'm smiling as he is when I'm crying. 
I saw somebody the other day put it on Facebook and, and we used to kind of make fun of and laugh a little bit at the, how wild this lady got to singing and Garrison was with me and, and I said just watch for a minute it's going to happen but, but old Peg McKamey used to let it rip the God in the mountain is still God in the valley when things go wrong he'll make it right The God of the good times is still God in the bad times. And the God of the day, <laughs> he's still God in the night. You talk of faith when you're up on the mountain. But down in the valley, the words don't come so easy. But he's still God. And be not weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Because you see, getting the victory over this weakness is not my destination. My destination is to kneel at the feet of Jesus. Remember the choir used to sing that song? Through the storm and the rain, I'm going to keep on praising him. Through the storm and the rain, I'm going to keep on praising him. And then we used to get to that part, I can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name, Jesus. We can't give up. We can't back down. We have a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. The only hope I have, whether it's in this life or the life to come, is in Christ Jesus. I can't, hey, I can't make it by myself. I can't make it with just my family and my friends. I can't make it with my job. I can't make it with my dignity. I need Jesus! I need him to correct me. Stand with me. I need him to correct me. I need him to chasten me sore. I need him to direct my steps and order my life. He needs me to just let it be healed. He needs me. He needs me to just let it be healed.